Today we'll be using and going through Tmux, a great terminal package which allows you to use multiple sessions in the background of your terminal. That way you can exit out of the terminal without any effect on what's happening in the background. Let's get started by opening up a terminal. The biggest use cases for Tmux is to protect your running programs on a remote connection. That way it doesn't get dropped if you lose your connection. Another great reason to use Tmux is to work with either multiple programs or multiple people in one shell together. And it kind of gives you an experience like a window manager. With that being said, I'm going to try using Tmux by typing in Tmux. If you ever get lost on what's being typed in the right hand corner, it will show up for you. That way you can type it as well. By default here in Ubuntu, the Linux distribution I'm using today, Tmux is not installed. So we'll first have to install Tmux. We want to do sudo apt update first. Make sure you have spaces between the sudo apt and update and then press enter. Type in your administrative password and press enter. All right, now we should have it installed. I'm gonna clear things out. So after doing sudo apt update, I'll do sudo apt install and then tmux. This will help us install tmux. I'll press enter for yes, the default and tmux will get installed in the background. Once that happens, I'm gonna do clear and then we can start tmux up by typing in tmux, which will start a new session session zero, which might not be a good name, but we can create a official name for the session if we do new dash session, and then we do a dash S and then type in the name of the session. Do not put a space between these two. I'm just gonna call this session one. So what this is doing, starting Tmux with a new session called session one. All right, pressing enter, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, it says session one. And we currently have one window open with the bash shell. The first window is represented by zero. And in the right hand side, you can see the host name of the computer as well as the time and date. So it's really that easy to start using Tmux. So you can now start issuing normal commands. For example, install something, run a script, compile something without having to worry about it going on in the background and losing your remote connection. So for example, let's just do something a little complicated that will take a little time. For example, we can download the Linux kernel source packages. If I do git clone, well, first off, I need to make sure I have git. I don't think I do sudo apt install git, and then I can use it. Yep, just like I thought, I don't have it, but now I do. If I do git clone, and the master repository is located at github.com, torvolds, and then linux.git. If I press enter, you can see that it started cloning into Linux. Now it's going to take a while because it's a fairly big project. You can see that it's receiving the files. So what happens if I hit X and I close out the terminal entirely? What happens now? Well, did everything end? No, not necessarily. Because we're using Tmux, we can start back to terminal real quick and I can attach back to that session that I had open. I can do Tmux and then space attach dash session and then dash T and then type in my name of the session, which was session one. If I press enter, look at that, I'm back in. Fantastic. I'm going to reissue this so I can show you another thing real quick. I'm gonna exit out of the terminal as well and then go back and start a new one so that I can show you what happens if I don't attach to that specific session. So in this case, I'm just gonna do Tmux. Huh, weird. Well, right here, we don't see a session going on or at least the session that we had started a moment ago. Well, that's because it doesn't attach the proper session. You have to use tmux attach session dash t session one, because that's what we named our session. And then you'll actually see that things are still running in the background. So here it's accomplished around 1.2 gigabytes. Under normal circumstances, if you didn't start a tmux window, you would have ended this download and you would have said bye-bye and you would have had to start all over this is a very nice feature and tool to use Tmux whenever you're using a headless server or remoting into a computer. There are some other neat tips and tricks with Tmux that we're gonna go over. If you'd like to start a new window in the same session, you can do this by doing Control B together and then typing C. As you can see now, we have zero for Git and one for bash. The one with the star means the current window that we're in. Now I can start typing here and we still have the git window going with this dash. That means it's a previous window we were on. In order to switch windows, it's pretty easy as well. You do control B followed by N. That switches our windows and you can see we're back on the git window. 
and bash is now previous. Again, easy to switch between them. Control B N, Control B N, Control B N, and you can keep doing that as much as you want. Again, if you create a new one, Control B and then C. But what's also pretty cool is if you wanted to have multiple terminal windows, for example, there are multiple people on a server, which means they're maybe working on something together or separately. If there's only one session going on, the zero session, you can just do tmux A or attach. And if I start typing stuff on the right hand here, you'll also see it over here being shown on the left. How wonderful is that? This is a great way to work on stuff together on a remoteless or headless server. I can also access the different windows in this terminal, for example, if I do control B N, notice how I can go between things. I'm gonna cancel this out here and do a clear and you'll just notice how both sessions are resolving themselves in real time. One thing that you might come across is if you make your window a little bit too big or small, the other window might not be able to actually read the contents. For example, let's just do this. What's happening here is it's just saying that currently your window size is a little bigger than the other. That's why you get the dots. You can change the view as necessary to get rid of the dots. Just something so you don't so you don't come across this and think something's wrong. So now I'm going to exit out of this one, close that terminal, and focus back on this. And how do you exit out of the session or clear it out? One way, of course, is if you shut down your computer or the server that you're on, the session and Tmux will end. But if you want to clear a Tmux session yourself, we can do that by doing Tmux and then type in kill space and press enter. It says we can use pane, server, session, and window. So for example, let's just stop a window. So we'll do tmux kill dash window space dash t zero. And look at that, it got rid of the window zero that was below. What if we wanna kill the session? We can do that too. Let's just do tmux kill dash session space. And actually, since we're in this session right now, you don't even have to specify the session, you just press enter and that will completely get rid of the session. It says that it exited session one. So again, you can start a new session and this is what I like to do mostly whenever I'm first getting on. Way easier than naming your session, you just do tmux and press enter. That will create a new session called zero. And if you want to get out of this, you can either do exit or again, tmux kill dash session. I will mention one other thing that's nice to know for people who want to be able to want the ability to save and restore Tmux sessions. This can save layouts, open windows, pane arrangements, and other commands. Meaning if you just close your terminal or even reboot the system, you can easily restore your Tmux session exactly how it was before. So I'll put a link in the description below so you can access the GitHub page. In order to install this one, you'll have to clone down this shell script and set up some plugins in order to use this properly. I won't get too far into this because it's a little bit advanced, but for those of you who want to get even more use out of Tmux, make sure to check it out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Tmux. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.